So we're going to start things off the rich. Coach, um, has uh, C.J. Lewis kind of moved into Kobe's spot, or is that still an open competition? I think you see C.J.'s definitely stepped up. But, you know, Jelani, C.J., Jalen, all those guys are kind of moving around in various different spots. We use them on the inside. We use them on the outside. Um, but, you know, C.J. played well. He graded out well, uh, blocked well, and uh, did a nice job for us yesterday. I just noticed on that on the depth shot, you call it the X position. Both guys are 6'3". Is there something about that position that you want a big guy in there? No, I, I think it just I think that's just the way we list them to list them truthfully. If you really watch the game, those guys kind of line up all over the place. You know, in, in in general in football, you know, three by one, X receiver on the backside, you'd love to have a big guy who can run and creates mismatches. So Rich in a perfect world, you get a guy who looks like like a Julio Jones and you put him out at X and you go play ball, you know what I mean? We'll go next to AJ Black. Hey, Coach, do you have any injury updates on Deion Jones? No, not yet. Um, he's going to get a – I believe he got an X-ray, and he's going to get an MRI. When I checked in with them, he's going to get an MRI today. Um, I know he was in a lot of pain yesterday. Um, tough kid, though. I mean, you know, he smiled at me today and said he's ready, but, you know, we'll, we'll see, and, and we'll make sure we, we take care of him. I'd imagine AJ will have an answer for you probably, on, you know, when we start back up. We'll go to Kevin. Hey, Coach, uh, 297 total yards of offense last night. Uh, I believe it was 209 yards uh, in punting. Obviously not a great ratio, but you still won the game. What did you take most, you know, out of watching the film? Yeah, um, one, I, I thought our special teams did an incredible job. I think one of the biggest plays that, um, you know, was a little bit unnoticed, we were punting from our goal line. Really, Grant's heels were on the goal line, and we flipped the field. I mean, I think they fair caught the ball in the 35. Hunter went down and forced a fair catch in the fourth quarter. Um, our kickoff game was great. Our punt team held those two returners really to nothing. And um, then obviously the kick at the end of the game, you know, we had the, the one edge rush off the field goal where they blocked it. We fixed it and we hit the game winner. So special teams was good, but it's a team game, right? I mean, if you go back and you really watch that game closely, I thought on their first drive, they hit us on a few plays. And after that, we had them third and, 10 or 12 and we stopped them and we jump off sides and it's all self-inflicted down the field and if we do our job we're off the field then on defense again it's third down and 10 on the minus side of the field we call a great pressure have them we miss the sack spins out of it runs around hits a play uh and then we again self-inflicted down the field so when you do all that and you keep our defense on the field and they keep our offense out on on the bench I don't think they ever got in a, in a routine where they weren't getting the ball quick enough. They weren't getting any into any rhythm really until the end of the game when we started getting the three and outs. Um, but that's why it's a team game. I mean, we got to get off the field and we got to give our offense the football um, because there were holes and we hit a bunch of them and there were guys open and we need to find some more of them. And you saw in the fourth quarter that we really put it all together. Um, you know, like I said last week, I'm going to enjoy the victory our players are. But when you watch this film, um, again, it's about us. And uh, little things that if you really look at the tape closely and um, if we do our job, this doesn't come down to the last play of the game at all. We'll go to Rich. I was talking about the two-minute offense. Um, do you put a lot of emphasis on that in practice or is that an everyday thing in practice? Or you just, I mean, how much time is spent on, on that particular offense? A lot. Um, you know, we know games are going to come down to two-minute offense and defense. Um, we spent a lot of time on situational football. And in training camp, we did it maybe every other day. And, you know, it's good for me too, Rich, just to get on the sideline and work on when I should call timeouts and when we should run it on, when we should, you know, if we get a first down, when we should run a play or should we clock it. So there's so many situations that we went over. We come in as a staff, we watch them. Um, you know, there's some I've made poor decisions on in practice that I've had to correct, and it's a big learning experience. But we do it every week during the season. And I thought the operation from the staff, from the booth down to the field, to the quarterback, um, it was outstanding. I mean, you want to talk about clock management, getting out of bounds. I mean, when Zay stepped out of bounds there, when Hunter stepped out of bounds there, when Phil took the ball, caught it, through it, caught it, through it. When we hit the check down, got vertical, got the first down. You know, we, I thought we used our timeouts wisely. Um, and I just think the execution was awesome. And you see so many teams in those situations. 
that haven't been through it uh, not succeed. So I give the players a ton of credit for just staying so calm and cool. Go to Dan. Coach, uh, in the RPO, uh, when the quarterback has the ball and, and is making the read, where's that read go for him? Is it supposed to go off a linebacker or off a block? And, and when is the decision made for the quarterback? Is it by design for him to run versus, versus pass? Well, there's a whole bunch of different kinds of RPOs, Dan. On some, you read a, an overhang defender, and if he steps up, you throw the RPO. There's some where you read an inside defender. Um, if he steps up, you throw it. If not, you hand it off. And then there's some that are built in where the quarterback can actually run the ball. Um, some have multiple options. So it just depends on, you know, which one you're talking about. Go to AJ. Yesterday we saw Max Roberts uh, playing a lot on that defensive line. What does he, what did you see in him and what does he bring to the, that defensive line uh, from Maine? He's got good speed. He's got a great get off. He can bend, he can rush the quarterback. Um, just really proud of him. I think he had one and a half sacks and he's, you know, been here for like two weeks. Um, so for a kid to get in here this quickly and contribute the way he did, and even more so, he had the big play when the quarterback spun out. Um, he was actually caught inside. He rushed, he came underneath, then he chased him all the way down. And it was like a 15 yard loss for them in a crucial situation. Um, but really good get off, good speed, good bendability, good pass rush ability. Go to Rich. Yeah, back to the two minute drill. How much was that on Phil? I mean, they, they were an obvious prevent, and he just kept kept going to the short pass, a short intermediate pass game. Was that his decision making, or was that just, you know, the progressions and how they went down? Well, I think it's both. Um, you know, there's one he did a great job earlier on in one of the drive starters where he went. You could see him go to his first read. It wasn't there. He went right to his second read. He threw it. It was Jalen Gill caught the ball in the middle and got us the first down. And then on the others, you know, Coach Signetti and those guys are doing a great job of getting us in the right play where it's, you know, get it to the sideline or throw it away. And those are high-speed, fast decisions. You tell them you can't take a sack, you can't throw the ball in the middle of the field, it's throw it to the sideline, get it out of bounds, or get rid of the football. Um, so that's a lot. That's it's easier said than done, Rich. You got bullets flying at you, you got coverages, but guys dropping in. And, and for him to have the composure um, to effectively lead us in the two-point Drive, the two minute drive was impressive. Go to Kevin. Coach, last week you talked about uh, pregame. You thought you rushed the team out. Uh, there wasn't really a flow you talked about. Did you feel like this week there was a bit more of a, uh, you know, a routine during pregame? Yeah, I think we did a better job. Um, we tweaked a few things. Um, and I think what we'll do each week, we'll keep talking about it as a staff and, and try to get it to where we think it's really good. Um, you know, I think every, every, after every game, Kevin, I think it's important to look at everything from, you know, how was it at the hotel for a six o'clock game? What would you have done different? Uh, what did you like? What didn't you like? You kind of do an after action report on everything. Um, operationally, I think we have great people who help us out a lot and we just got to continue to look at those things. Go to Dan. Coach, uh, defensively, uh, Max had said last week about playing sideline to sideline and having to cover the whole field. Everyone seemed really aware of the, of the speed from Texas State. But once you get into the game and you, you actually see it for the first time, was there an element that was still an adjustment period to playing a team that was going that fast and, and taking a shot downfield? You know, I think maybe early on, you know, they, hit it, they had a couple good plays and, and they hit us on the perimeter a little bit. But... You know, no, I think that our guys responded to it pretty well. Um, and for the most part, we eliminated the explosives. I mean, the ball really didn't go over our head. They made a couple of back shoulders on the sideline. They made a couple of nice catches. Uh, 18's a good player. He had a good one-hand catch when he kind of, you know, he kind of had Elijah um, away from him on that catch on the sideline. But for the most part, once we settled in, I thought our guys did a good job of keeping it in front. And it's still, Dan, it's just going to come down to, I mean, when you watch the film, it's the little things. And, and that starts with me. I mean, I'm not putting that on the players. I got to make sure our team does the little things right um, so we get better every week. And we'll wrap things up with Rich. Were you guys kind of selective with the blitz on Saturday? I don't recall really a lot, a ton of them. Uh, yeah, we, we, we picked and choose. Um, felt like we were getting a good pass rush with our front four. Um, and then at the end there, even in the middle, if you really look, Rich, we kind of – it was throughout the game. There were times when we went after them. There were times when we didn't. Um, so we picked and choose the right moments.
I thought Tam did a really good job. Um, he dialed up some key blitzes in, in really crucial times. Two weeks in a row, um, I thought he hit some pretty big ones. Um, so I thought he did a really, really nice job. That'll wrap things up for today, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. You guys have Thank a great weekend.